Today we're going to talk about shape painting. Now shape painting is a method of creating a composition in Photoshop that is very fast and it focuses on the beauty of hard edges. And another thing is that it helps uh, in that kit bash mentality to get a lot of stuff out really, really fast. Um, I really enjoy it and it's something that you can build up a library and put it to use really uh, effectively. The other benefit of shape painting is that you can do it with a mouse. So a lot of times when you don't have a tablet, you might uh, consign yourself to not do any digital painting. But with shape painting, you can have a lot of elements come together really fast. So first off, what is shape painting? Now that's question number one. I'm going to start with a new layer here just to mess around on. Now we should start with the shape tool, which you can get to with U and shift U will toggle between your various options. start up uh, application displayer. So again, the hotkey U switches to the shape tool and shift U toggles between the options. Now let's just start with the rounded corner square. That's a nice easy one. You'll notice up here in the tool section that there are three ways that you can draw with a shape tool. The first creates a path and this will literally be a path that you can go in and use either the I'm using A and shift A to toggle between the direct path select tool and alternatively the individual component selector I can't remember the name of it direct select tool so one of these we can grab and move these around the other selects the whole thing and paths are something that we use oftentimes for things like you could right click and make a selection from it Alternatively, you could have text that goes along a path, blah, blah, blah. You could even, if you have a brush, let me select an interesting looking brush, such as this nice dry medium marker. How about this? So if I have a path, I can right click, and oftentimes I will, using a different layer, gotta make sure I'm on the right layer. You might use a path to right click and stroke the path using something like the brush and even simulate pressure. And you can oftentimes get cool effects like that. So paths are obviously useful in their own right. The other option is to create a shape. And shapes will uh, keep the path Bezier interface as opposed to a roster based interface and it lets, it lets you go in and modify the stroke boop, 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 boop. or fill and even go in here to the shape layer panel so if I have this layer here and the properties of it I think I can click on this and modify some of this stuff after the fact However, we don't care about any of that. What we're going to be doing is using the third method, which is the pixels method. Now what this does is it in, will instead use the shape to generate roster pixels automatically. You can combine this as a straight shape. We could also use this as a brush tool, just like we would a brush. I can use the number line one through zero to set an opacity. So one equals 10%, zero equals 100%. Typing 5 equals 50%, and I could even type two numbers really fast for the ones and tens to do or the tens and ones to do. So if I type 0, 03 really fast, I can set my opacity to 0.3. And perhaps very slowly build up some green. Similarly, you can use this in all the ways that you use a brush. So for instance, I can use a layer mode transfer. What if I wanted to uh, color dodge my way up. What if I wanted to screen this? What if I wanted to multiply it? Alt shift M for multiply. And in this way we can use it using all the various methods over here. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm switching these, 
first off, it's a hotkey that's dependent on your current tool. So if I'm on a uh, brush-like tool such as this, it's going to modify this. If I'm on the layer tool, these hotkeys will modify the blend mode over here on the layer. But assuming that you're on something like the brush tool or the shape tool or the pencil tool and you wanted to modify it in the tool settings, um, Alt, Shift, Plus, and Minus toggles through your modes. And then Alt, Shift, plus various hotkeys has a couple of defaults. So for instance, Alt, Shift, F is soft light. Alt, Shift, M is multiply. Alt, Shift, S is screen. Alt, Shift, D is color dodge. And Alt, Shift, O is overlay. Those are the main ones I tend to use. Maybe hard light, Alt, Shift, H. So with shape painting, I'm gonna set this back to normal. What we can do is pound out a composition really, really fast. And we can use things like photographic elements to have custom shapes that expand this beyond these basic tools. Now to start with, I'm gonna to go to the custom shape tool. And you can see some of these options. Now over here, you, you can click and notice that there's a couple of built-in libraries, such as the camel shape. Now what happens when I use this tool? I can hold shift and constrain this. What's happening is, in the same way that I could have a shape, this is using Bezier's to have a custom design shape, but instead it's just using them to draw with pixels. So oftentimes you could use this uh, with pixels, select color, select an opacity such as 6%, and even using these camels, sort of wind your way towards something of a landscape. So how do we make one of these custom shapes? Well, we can do this in any way that we start off with a shape. We can do this the simple way. So for instance, I'll just do it with uh, the polygonal tool. Let's say I have a path that I draw. Maybe I do it like this. Maybe I draw it with the pen tool. Maybe this is our pen. So this is a path. And as long as you have a path, you have everything you need to make a custom shape. I'm now going to go over to the path tool and we can see this work path here. We can also use the arrow tool, A or Shift A, to toggle between direct select, which would let me modify these beziers, or the black arrow, the path selection tool, to select the whole thing. So having selected this, I can either right click over here and choose define custom shape. I believe I can also right click over here. Nope. So you have to have a uh, shape selected or a path selected. And you right click and choose define custom shape. You're now asked to name this. Maybe I could call this something like uh, weird whale. And now this is a shape in a library that I can utilize. I now can go to custom shape tool. I'll switch this to the pixels option. And you'll notice that over here in the shapes panel, way down here in the undefined category, is that whale. So what are some other ways that we can do this? Well, the number one way that I think is really cool to um, do shape painting is you can get a lot of information from photography and other resources and use that as a shorthand to get your shapes started. So just really fast as an example of this, I have all sorts of uh, layers that I've thrown in here in Photoshop that have all sorts of things that maybe I want to use for my shape painting. A quick note on how you might go about gathering some of these things. I did this oftentimes using Flickr, searching for things like mountains. And when a bunch of resources come up like this, each mountain picture might have something different that you like. So for instance, on this one, I kind of like this tree shape of this far distance island and try and look at it and look for black and white patterns or some sort of pattern that you like. So for instance on this one, maybe I would go for this cloud shape. These clouds are really good if I wanted to have a shape to sort of stamp in a quick sky. Some of these, maybe it's the silhouette of the actual mountain. Maybe it's just a single tree. Maybe it's something like this where uh, using an old public domain 
manual. I just want to have something like this perspective grid really fast. So what if I take this layer and I just want to have a shape that represents a two point perspective grid that I could just use as a start to my compositions so that I could just dive in and get a two point perspective project working really fast. I'm going to hit control J on this to duplicate this out. There's that layer. And I could do something like Let me see, how do I want to do this? I think I want to work on this layer that I just created in isolation. So I'm going to create, convert it to a smart object, which will let me double click on it and just work on this single image. Now having done that, let's go to the channels and you'll notice that there's these channels with varying degrees of selection. I'm going to just click on one of these. I'm going to actually here, I'll duplicate one of these down. And what I'm looking for is black and white data that's pretty aggressive and strong. So I'll actually lighten this and darken it. And you have something like that. If I control click on this, I've loaded this as a selection. Actually I want to darken, lighten the lights even more. Something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So if I control click on this, I've got this selected. I could then go to my paths panel and you can turn any selection that you have into a path. So if I just click on this, this is now paths. Having done that, I'm going to select this path and I'm going to select this path and right click Define custom shape. Oh, wait, never mind. I want to do the opposite of this. So I want to invert this. Really quick, I'm going to use the burn tool to get rid of some of this leftover white. So, you know, you're starting off with essentially the same problem you always have in Photoshop, which is what is my selection and how can I make it good? So this is pretty good as a starting guide. Again, I'm going to uh, control click on that path. And I will click on this to create paths from my selection. Now I'll switch to the arrow tool and right click on this. Define custom shape. And we'll call this two point perspective. So now if I had a new document, that was, for instance, 1920 by 1080. I could go to my paths tool, or my shape tool, find my custom shape, and very quickly just have some sort of impression of a two-point perspective grid ready to go. Now you're going to notice something as you make these, which is the resolution of your image and your selection at the time of creation is going to determine how detailed or undetailed uh, your problem is going to be. So we'll go back over here. So for instance, these images were very low res and perhaps not good enough to make a good selection. Other images on here are going to be too high res. So let's click on this one. Now what I like about this one is obviously this tree line. These are all smart objects because of how I dragged and dropped them. By the way, one last tip. I use a plugin called Download All Images. You can see this. It's a Chrome extension that lets you, on a page such as this, just click the Download All Images uh, button and it will load a zip folder or a zip file that you download, which will then be something that you can extract using the program 7-zip. And then you have a bunch of images ready to go. This is a lot more time effective than right clicking and saving as every single image, especially on Flickr where you have to go into a size um, secondary dialogue choice. So on something like this, I think the obvious selection is going to be these trees. And this is something that could be very handy for just a quick lay in of everything I need for a composition. So I'll grab something like that. 
I'll duplicate it. Again, white is selected and black is deselected. So I'm going to invert this. I'll hit Control L for my levels. And I'm going to crush the blacks until I have this nice tree silhouette. Next, maybe I'll just go in. I'll just uh, select this right now. And using the lasso tool, subtract from my selection by holding Alt. And what I'm trying to do is just get rid of some of this stuff right around here so that I don't have this hard edge of border that would otherwise imply that this was from an image that was already cropped. So that's my selection right now. I'm going to then go to the paths tool and we're once again going to make this selection into a path. You can do this by clicking right here and now I have path from selection. Now this is a much more detailed photo and you'll notice that the selection I got is a lot more detailed. You actually might want to reduce this. So what if I uh, took this channel, uh, this channel, going to fill this with a black brush really fast so that I have just the trees that I want, right? I could reduce this overall size and the benefit of this is going to be that this tree is not going to make as um, noisy of a selection. So let me undo that really fast. I'm going to try a couple different resolutions. So this is my big one and we'll go about half size on this. So on this one, when I click, control click on this thumbnail to load it as a selection and go over to the paths tool, I can create a path from selection. And you'll notice that this one will hopefully have a little less resolution issues. I'm then going to once again, right click and I can define a custom shape. I think I can also, I think there's a way I can probably simplify this selection. on this miniature one. Perhaps you might just blur it a little. And that could reduce a lot of the extra pixels that are made by some of that noise. So here we have a slightly more abstract tree line. So now, if I click that and I create a path from it, this is starting to be a little less um, overpathed. And I think that's pretty good. So I'll right click, define shape, I'll call this tree line one. And over here, if I was starting a new layer, way up at the top, actually right here. So now I could use that shape tool, select my tree line. And click and dragging this out. Now what's cool is um, you can click and drag this out and just scale it down and it kind of turns into something of perspective lines, right? You can use these in ways that are a little more abstract. But we quickly have a tree line. Now all of these images that I've uh, thrown in here have different things that I might want. So for instance on this one, I might try and use the object select tool to do something like this window. So like what 
by. Select that. Convert it to a smart object. Double click on it. This window is nice and easy to select now. Duplicating a channel is You know, it doesn't really make sense when you're a beginner, but it does tend to be one of the most effective ways to Photoshop quickly. So I have something like that. Control click on it. Or actually filter. I'll do something like paint daubs with a tiny brush size. To simplify this down, a palette knife. And this is already going to make it a little more simplified so that when I control click on this and I right click or, and then I turn it into a path, I can now right click, define custom shape. Oh, wait, that's awful. Never mind. Invert this. And I don't want a lot of this edge stuff. I just want that window shape. So I load that as a selection, turn it into a path, right click, and define custom shape window. So if I go back to this one, I can now start using this to draw windows. Now, you might start to get really, really bored with a lot of this stuff because it's a complex procedure that takes a lot of time to do all these steps. So let's get to the next step, which is how can we speed this up by saving our custom shape um, sensibilities with an action? So let's do it right here using this cloud one right now. This cloud is great. What a beautiful little cloud. Again, also one last thing, when I was searching on Flickr, Make sure you're searching with no known copyright restrictions. That way you can you know, sleep well at night knowing that you haven't cheated at all. Now I'm gonna right click and do my similar, th actually this is already a smart object considering how I dropped it in. So I'm gonna go in here, find my highest contrast channel. Looks like it's the red one. Duplicate it down. And again, just try and make that sense of a high contrast black and white selection. Control click it on the paths panel, make it a selection, and right click with a shape tool to define a custom shape. Now this is awful, so again we're going to try and do this in a much faster way. So the starting idea here is that you would run an action to go through all these steps when you have your selection made. So step one is the um, human task of making selections and step two is going to be the computer task where we have it run through all these things uh, to do things. So I'm going to control click on this. This is our selection and now it's time to start an action. You can find the actions in the actions panel and an action is just a macro recorder in Photoshop. So if you're doing something that takes five steps and it's the same five steps every time you can use it to make things really really fast. I'm going to start by clicking on this plus to create a new action called uh, define custom shape. We can even get it, give it a function key such as, how about F4? Shift F4 is now going to be our making a custom shape tool. Not even a color, it doesn't really matter, but now you know. So when I hit record, you'll notice that the record button is um, red. And that means that any action that we do right now is going to be stored inside of this action. Now again, we started with a selection. The first step in this process is 
to turn that selection into paths. So on the paths panel, I'm going to go over here and make work path from selection again. And notice that that started as a little step here. The next thing that we do is we switch to an arrow key or one of the direct select tools and we right click and define custom shape. Next up, we want to get rid of all of these paths. So maybe I click on this and delete the work path. And then I switch to the custom shape tool. And I think that's it. So now let's try doing this on something even faster. Let's find a, a nice image. Some of these have different things. Like I really like this sort of beach tree line here. So what if we try and do an object select where we kind of very carefully go along here. Oh, I need to be on the right layer. This sort of seven shape is very handy in perspective stuff. I'm going to use the quick select tool. Again, you can toggle between these using shift W. This includes the magic wand, the object select, and the quick select tool. And we never want to just give up after our first selection option, right? Normally the magic wand tool is something I would never ever use. Maybe I go in and using a hard round brush, I could just like paint some of this stuff. I mean, I'm using a mouse. I'm holding shift to do this straight line. So I click, then I hold shift and I draw the straight line. So I'm going to try doing this the channels way once again. I just love channel selecting so much. I feel like if I go to the blue channel, it's so dark. I think that's going to be my best bet. So I'll duplicate this with the level. We're just looking for black and white data that says foreground and not water. Something like that. All these little white flecks, although they're kind of cool, they're probably just going to cause me problems or it makes too, the shape too complex. I'm just going to get rid of it. So having done that, let's select it and then, oh yeah, now I have my new action, which again is Shift F4. So let's just do it. And look, now all those steps, that TDM is reduced into a single thing. 
go back over here go to my play layer so I could use this to just very quickly sketch in some sort of horizon right I did this wrong. Again, white is selected, black is deselected. So never mind, I gotta do this over. I'm gonna invert that. Once again, select this. Now shift F4 to run my custom action. And that's better. This is the one I want. So on this one, I could right click and delete this shape. So back here, while I'm playing around, I could just use this to very quickly get some sort of starting composition worked up. Other things you might do, uh, people are using um, shapes for all sorts of cool things. You might use it to just have some quick people-based stamps. So maybe uh, if you wanna like really quickly get a crowd in, you would just have people stamps or people brushes to do shape painting with. This is the object select tool. And it didn't work because I didn't have this layer selected. Actually, let's double click on this and work on the smart object version of it. Like why go backwards? Whee. Alt with the shape select to deselect background things that I don't want. And shift to add the selection. Alt to deselect. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So having done that, I've got my selection. Let's go check the pants out. Again. Always try to play it cool if you don't get your selection done on the first time. It doesn't have to be in a single click. Use multiple techniques to get to where you want. So having gotten a people-based silhouette. I'm trying to think about things like um, areas that might stand out as breaking that silhouette. So I definitely want to make sure that I get like clean areas of feet. And then shift F4. Now I can work on this and throw some people in here maybe. Just a bit of perspective knowledge. If you are uh, looking out at the horizon, anybody who's the exact same height as you will have their head Go through that horizon. So, as long as I just hold shift and draw these things so that they land like that, they'll always end up being kind of correct.
again, like, there's so many ways to do this. There's so many good things that can come out of it. I'm going to double click on this one. And, like, what if I wanted to get just, the, like, the sky color? Select color range. Like, maybe I just want some sort of abstraction of the sky. Like that. Shift F4. Now that's defined. And I could go back up here. And really quickly, like what if I, you know, started off with this? Like this is my baseline. And I just start assuming that actually here, let's let's have a new like 1920 by 1080. And this is where I'll start actually doing things. So uh, we're gonna use shape painting to try and make a composition, uh, just a digital painting where we uh, go from the background to the foreground. So farther away first and then going up. Maybe I start with like a gradient using one of the pre-built ones that looks kind of sky-like. And I'll switch to the shape layer, create a new layer. So this is like my background sky. Uh, I think I gotta invert it there. Now on this next layer forward, next farthest away thing is gonna be like the clouds in front of this. So I can go in and use some of my cloud silhouettes, maybe something like this. And start thinking about how I want to do this. Or what if I wanted these clouds to be a little softer? I could fill this with something like blue. Or maybe a gradient again. It goes from my like dark cloud. So these are going to be underlit. Maybe I go with the starting point like that. Throw a mask on it. Invert the mask so nothing is here. Then I could use the shape tool. To instantly start getting some sort of interesting sky coming in. I think I actually want these to be Lighter. And by doing this on a mask, not only can I modify it after the fact, but the levels. I could also go into the object properties on this mask and feather it so it's you know, a little soft. Just a starting sky. Maybe I create a new layer. Go back to my shape tool. Now I get that white fluffy cloud. Duplicating this and using this as like a foreground cloud. And on this one, let's go in and modify it so that it's a little less feathered. Maybe, Maybe way back here, down on the horizon, I'll have something like a gradient. Let's make this be something really pink. Maybe like right on the horizon line. There's some like very aggressive. Oh, there's actually like one that's 
something that's really, really, really bright. Maybe I'll use this tree line. Use people to draw in clouds. Why not? Now there are some things that I don't necessarily like about shape painting. I think the number one thing I don't like is that uh, you can't orient it as you draw it. So, and you can't even do this. Like if I rotate the canvas and go back to the shape tool, you'll notice that the people are still oriented towards that horizon. Use some window. Oh, that's better. This one, hold on. So that's our background. Now we can move forward a little bit in the foreground to something like the mountain range off in the background. Maybe there's like a cool mountain range. So we'll call this one mountain. And I can actually go over here and find some of my example mountains. Oh uh, yeah, so we have the channels on this one. Yeah, let's duplicate the screen one. Make it real sharp. Again, white is selected, black is deselected. Shift to five. All right. Shift to four. By the way, another thing you can do on this action. is I can click on this dialog here and that'll make it so that when I do something like select this and shift up for it it'll let me rename it at that point so I can go in and name this clouds 2 at that point I know I said I would move on, but just having so much fun with the sky still. Let's delete this other one. And I don't know what this is going to be yet. I think I should actually try using as procedural as possible a workflow. So instead, I'm going to create a solid color layer. Invert the mask. Gradient tool, or no. Shape tool, select those clouds. I'll invert it so everything is red. And on this one, now I'll paint with black to subtract. So now on this one, I could do things like apply a lot of these things that you might choose, such as a gradient layer, such as a change in hue saturation. I can do that through 
effects. So I can go in here and choose gradient overlay. And again, like a lot of this stuff is just looking through it and seeing what you like. Move up onto iridescent. on something like this, perhaps I could do something like You gotta be careful with some of this bevel and emboss stuff. It can get kind of stupid looking. Yeah, All right, let's actually get into the mountains. Goodbye to that. Let's find one of our mountain lanes. Again, no mountain is necessarily going to be the solution to everything. Something like this one's really nice. Again, I can't help it. I just love using channels. There's so many other tools in Photoshop, but channels is the one I like. Maybe I'll use different one. Select. Focus area? Nah. This doesn't have enough depth of field for that. Select. Color range. Color range is fun. I'm just going to hold shift and just keep clicking until I got something like that. So I'll start by making this a path. Or not a path, a channel. Just because that's going to give me a little bit an easier time deleting stuff from this to be mountain or not mountain. Use control L for levels and just level out some of that black and white data I don't want. Oh, that's pretty good. And this was like a low res thumbnail that Flickr grabbed. And to some extent, that actually can make it better for this stuff. Because it'll end up generating less path points. And a lot of times, like if you have a slow computer or you just bog down Photoshop with gigabytes of patterns and shape libraries, it can get really not good. Now I'm going to name this Mountain. Mountain. Oh. Maybe I go in here now. So I can, uh, I'm going to throw all this stuff in a folder called um, Sky. So we're now on mountains, right? We use the shape tool plus our newly defined shape. And bam, instant mountains. Actually, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 100% opacity. And just get this in here. And I'm actually going to lock the pixels on this now. So, what that does is it makes it so that uh, I can't draw outside of this. In other words, wherever the mountains are, kind of stuck with that. 
I can do this after a while, so maybe I use my mountains a little bit more. And do something I like. I'll set this to 10% opacity. Go back to that color that I liked. And get this sense of things going from foreground to background. And because I care about this silhouette to start with, maybe I do something like a little bit of lasso painting to round it out. I'll use that abstract cloud shape. Again, a 10% opacity. And before locking some of these other pixels. Actually, hold on. I'll just modify that silhouette a little bit more using this tool. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, cloud shape because you'll notice that it doesn't have borders that represent like the edge. So if I use it down here, I can have this um, more accurately show like the transition from foreground to background. Because normally there would be like a little bit of atmospheric perspective, and you're choices now are do you represent that atmospheric perspective with opacity or by just eyeballing the colors to match so uh, that atmospheric perspective is going to make it so that this is a little closer in value to the sky and otherwise saturation And now let's maybe add like one big sort of fake peak. So we'll go back to the U shape. I'll actually just use these people at full opacity. I'm going to add like one major mountain lion mark over here. Color picking so that I have the right color. By the way, I'm doing a secret trick right now. I set my mode to clear, which is not something that's available for layers. But the clear mode is basically an eraser as a layer mode transfer, or a blend mode. So while my blend mode is clear, it'll actually erase. Some interesting places to go. I'm now going to lock the pixels and going back to some of these other ones. So something like this mountain has this pattern of snow on it. That's another thing that maybe I looked at and say I want to use that data. So this one's probably good for a select color range. Just select the white, up the fuzziness. 
create a new mask based on that. Hit I for invert. And I just want to get that sort of, um, I want to get that snow pattern here. And I also don't want to accidentally have this border side. that and again I don't want this border side control click on that shift F4 rename it to mountain snow something like that I'm going to go back over here to our mountains. So I can now create a new layer and I'll actually make this a clipping mask under here. And using that snow with a white color, I can do some just to start off with. By the way, let's actually get some reference. Let's look up an Albert Bierstadt painting. When in doubt, copy off of your artistic betters. So I could find something like this. And this might be something where I start using this as a color palette to figure out some of these choices that I've actually made. I think I like this one because it's got that crunchy snow on top. So in Photoshop, I go back over here. I'm going to paste this in as a new layer way up top. And some of these uh, color choices I can modify to fit this. So for instance, on my sky, here's the first thing I do. is I'll do these like one by one. And this has sort of a blue glow on the side that's a little prettier. So I'm going to go up way to the top, start off with the lighter gradients. It's like a nice teal color. Sometimes I like to just choose a color, set it to a strange blend mode, and try it, try it out. The other thing maybe I'll do is with this gradient of left to right, I'm trying to cop copy that warmth that the mountain has. Maybe the overall thing needs to be darkened. So I'll make the blues bluer. Is the curve stool. Perhaps darken it a little bit. And you know, once you get used to Photoshop, or a little more natural with it, it's really fun to do this sort of stream of consciousness stuff. So, for instance, having just um, doing something like this, where I drag that across. I could then use fade, control shift F, and try out some options on this gradient that I threw in there. I don't know. Linear light looks pretty cool, for sure. Do 
in the dark. One's going down. Maybe try multiply. that to color baron lower its opacity so here's my first clouds and this one's a little so these clouds are probably I don't know what do you think Might go in and use the soft eraser to just erase some of it. Over there, I'll paint with black. So, like this cloud. Was a little bit repetitive. Maybe I'll fix it with shapes. These are on 10% opacity. I'm just kind of like dabbing them in here, and daubing them in. The further back you get, the more likely it is to uh, be flat. Whereas the closer to the sky, the more perspective distortion you'll see. So like. The closer to the horizon, look for like straight line style stuff. And it's so fun painting on masks because it like takes a lot of the scary part out. Now this one is now just probably a layer too much. But maybe I can find something fun with it. So let's try a soft light. Let's go back over here to its layer properties. And I can reduce that feathering a little bit. Maybe choose a darker one. Maybe up the feather. And just lower the opacity a little bit. This is a little more subtle. Something like this one. I probably need to drastically change. Because again, now we're trying to actually like paint to some sort of reference. And then try a bunch of layer mode transfers. See what works. See what doesn't. Make it subtle. Make it strong. I'm actually on this one, I think. I'm gonna try and match those pink clouds a little more. Pretty good looking sky. Cool. 
Jump at the mountains. Well, the way distant mountain has a combination of very white peaks, which are slightly lighter than the sky. And then foreground peaks that aren't quite as high where the snow falls off. So I think like way up here, we'd want that. <coughs> so on this layer, I'm going to use that. I'm going to switch back to my shape tool. I'm going to get that mountain peaks color flaw. And why not cheat? Let's just color pick right off of Albert Bierstadt. Good old Bierstadt. And using the shape layer. I can start to get some stuff in there. Now, you're able to build up color in kind of two ways a lot of the time. One is to have a color that's a little too strong, such as this very dark foreground color, and then reduce your opacity, and then sort of build it up until multiple strokes add together into something that you like. The other way is to use the explicit color as it is, such as that blue, and set your opacity to full. And when I go in here, there's perhaps a little bit more confidence. So for instance, this right here. I'm going to create, I'm going to stick these in a group, call them Mountain One. And maybe I reduce this overall layer a little bit. So it's a little more subtle. Maybe I reduce this one. So this mountain definitely exists. Sky behind it can't be seen through the mountain. However, sky in front of the mountain is definitely noticeable. So what I would oftentimes do is fill this with the sky color. So I color picked some sky color off of this, filled it with that while the layer is locked. And then reduce it using, where was it? The fade command. I want to fill that. I want to let me fade. Maybe I got to do it like that. Yeah, that's what I need. So I'm going to set this to my gradient to normal based. There's perhaps more of that sky transition on the bottom due to the fact that um, this atmosphere is building up. And then I can determine how much I liked it by reducing the opacity of that in post with the fade command. Command shift F or control shift F to fade. I might even create a new layer entirely as a clipping mask over this whole thing. And just reduce it a little bit. 
Now we're ready for the next chunk of mountains, which is going to be one step in front of this. I'll create a new layer, and maybe we want a new shape. I could go in and find a new mountain, maybe. Control clicking and moving these off into the distance. I'm just looking for something that you know has an appealing shape. That's pretty good. I'm gonna try object select first. Because this foreground is really obvious. Hey, it worked. First time. I go into my selection with quick mask and I'm going to use the hard round brush to just paint away anything that might make this stamp a little too obvious on the sides and stuff. Then shift to four, mountain, level three. This background mountain is actually pretty good too. Let's do that one. Let me just modify that. A lot of this really is like abstraction at this point. I'm going to shift F for it. Call it mountain mountain no, no 4. Go back to my composition. Now this one we're starting to get into these nicer colors. I'm going to start with this dark color. And Using the shape tool and these newer mountains, I'm going to make something that's kind of aggressive. You know, actually, I think I want this like, I'm going to copy this swooping down vibe that Beerstadt was working with. Mount, Mount Cops of Tourists. The famous landscape people travel all over the world to see. Go back to that whale shape. Set my mode to clear. So perhaps at this point we're thinking about things like where's the horizon? Maybe right around there. Which 
which makes a difference when we do things like uh, when determining things like how far off the ground things, uh, things get. So the closer to the foreground, the more they're um, going to break the horizon, which is why Bierstadt's landscapes look so epic, is because even though the horizon is back here, this mountain is still far above it. But things like trees, we don't want to make too big back there. So by working from foreground to background, you can usually avoid any major uh, hideous problems. I'm going to set this to clear again. My mode is clear now. I'll actually just use this to gussy things up. Also, the further back you get, although we might have things coming up out of the horizon, be on the lookout for ways in which it might flatten towards the horizon. Don't be afraid to break out and just reset this stuff. So I think over there, I started getting a little too crazy. Also, watch out for anything that's going to break the laws of physics, right? So like, this is a mountain pass. It's not going to be having a giant hole in it. I think one of the things I really find appealing about shape painting is that there's all sorts of ways in which it forces you to be a little less precious with your technique. So I think a lot of times people can get way too into things like having a brush that's really, really soft. And you know, you can combine this with something like lasso painting where Maybe I just draw with the lasso and a mouse. We get these things removed. I think I need some sort of larger element now. I think I'm going to do this foreground last. But on this one, I can start thinking about lighting information. So these way back mountains, maybe they were a little too illuminated. Maybe not. Maybe I can go on and do this. But I could start having some idea of whether these are lit on the left or the right. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I will just use the shape painting tool to start painting in the idea of illumination on these. Again, I could explicitly use this color, or I could do something where it's like a lighter color, and maybe I'm using this as a layer mode transfer. We're building it up slowly at low opacity, right?
Let's throw a dog in here. Real long. Like a dog. Yeah. combination of some of these with low opacity on top of what was originally this high opacity layer. And sometimes I do it as a mask, sometimes I do it as the actual layer. But over at this point, let's switch back to 100% opacity. Just paint you know, an entire landscape made out of chimpanzees. Shift R for clear, Option Shift N for normal. Boats. Let's paint with some boats. Cool. Proper Spanish galleon. And a lot of this stuff, I can now also modify in post. So because it's just on layer, maybe I want to up the saturation and lower the brightness. I can compare this and contrast it with the Bierstadt until I kind of like it. Maybe add another layer. <coughs> and this one I'll set to overlay and I'll just use this one to create a starting pattern of generalized lightness or darkness want this whole layer to be Lower. I just want to tab like some of the starting visual interest. Maybe color pick some of that sky color. Starts to, I don't know, kind of like a mountain here, right? I think I want a little more dark stuff.
By the way, on this layer, you might want to try setting it to like hard light. And then lightening it. I mean, it can take some finagling. It's nice to do this with a reference and then try to color match your reference. But by setting it to hard light, this will, in some respects, mix with the layer below it. You could also choose something like overlay. But so now you can see like there's some of these texture ideas. And, like really, what you're going for here is um, just a certain. Look at all these little dogs. <laughs> um, once you hit a certain um, density of detail. It all just sort of clicks into place. So having gotten to a starting point like that, let's choose I'm gonna select everything, every single layer that I've made so far. Duplicate it and merge it. And this is just like a quick trick for water. Let's flip it horizontally, or flip it vertically. Lower it to around there. And this will end up being some kind of instant lake. Woo. pretty great <laughs> but now I could perhaps lower the exposure on this and filter camera raw filter bring up the camera raw dialog and I like using this because we can use exposure to sort of lower everything in relation to each other just like you would in a camera maybe darken it a little bit I did control, sh uh, control alt f, f to redo that filter, and now I'll use control shift f to lower how much of it I did. Heck, maybe I'll even try blend mode. Yeah. There we go. So this is going to make it look like as the water was reflecting, some of that light energy dies off. It's not as strong. I could then use filter, blur, or distort. And usually, like, you know, I can blur it a little bit like that. Or you can blur it up and down. Yeah, sure. Control Shift F. Yeah. I could do that. So something where we only. Do it at partial opacity. Photoshop is fun. I like Photoshop. So now I might come in and start thinking about like some sort of foreground element on a new layer that's in front of this water. So again, foreground to background, you can just keep going back and forth and find little tricks like that. I'm going to start with, actually you not, know let's get some new textural detail in. Start from the bottom up.
There's a nice cups of trees. Let's do the channel method. For an obvious channel conundrum. Duplicate the channel. Let's make it very obviously this guy versus that stuff. Get rid of all this stuff we don't care about. White is black, or white is selected, black is deselected. I'm going to hit O until I get the burn tool. Shift O if you don't see it right away. We'll just burn away some of that stuff that I don't care about. What a nice looking selection of side trees. Shift F4 to run our hot key. Call this side tree. Go back over here. And we're going to make a big move. I'll go back to having my layers over here. And switch to the U. Tree line example. Here's another good tree. I'm going to increase the size of this. Why? Because you can see that this is a 320 by 240 thumbnail that Flickr got. So I'll make this 1600 by 1200. And that pixel resolution, whether I make a tree selection here or not, that's going to increase the resolution of the paths that are made when I define a shape. White is selected, black is deselected. So I'll get rid of the stuff that I don't care about now. And that's a nice little side island with hopefully enough detail that it makes a good shape. Let's find out. Switch back to this. Get those new side trees. And really, a lot of what we care about here is just shape language. Where we can find a flower. What I really want is trees. Do they have trees? Leaf trees. Perfect. Do the Bob Ross thing. Have one big tree way up in front.
But I'm just going to leave that there for now while I start making some other sort of giant compositional choice. So maybe I think like from here, you know, think through where would you be in the, just once again, I'm going to copy that Bierstadt composition almost verbatim. And make this sort of foreground idea. So lasso painting goes together with shape painting really well. Control U. So as these things get closer to the foreground, they're going to have less atmospheric perspective. That means less oxygen and air particles in between it and less clouds in between it, which means that it's going to end up getting higher contrast as we go. So now I can start modifying these and just trying to think through some sort of baseline composition of uh, this middle ground sort of tree area. My, my hand ergonomic is always something I think about in um, digital workflows. So right now, my hand is, my left hand is on Alt, Shift, and R, and my right hand is on the mouse. And all the time, I'm switching between Alt, Shift, N to set this to normal blend mode, which means I could do something like bring in some of these trees. and clear blend mode, which is the equivalent of an eraser that you only have in certain tools. And then, just like with these other layers, I can start having something like a clipping mask where I think through where is the light falling on these trees? Where does it have more or less of that stuff? Maybe I want to do another uh, hard light layer. So I'll hit V for the move tool and set this to hard light with Option Shift H. Or you could just be a noob and click over here and do that. 
Totally fine. Actually, I think this first one is going to be my a layer that I set the soft light or just build up some of those texture ideas. Especially using that like tree line. trying to think through like what would different areas of this be I think like the first trees would like you know I should think about how dark things are gonna be like behind them and then I can start thinking about things like um, how is sunlight peeking through here So now I'm choosing a lighter one. I'm just getting this. So now I have like some especially good dark muds back there. And because this is a clipping mask, it's all conforming to that initial shape. Now I can do another one. And I'll call this one light. Also make it a clipping mask. And this one. It's going to be set to hard light. So again, my just attention to detail one, I put it soft light. This one, I'm going to put it hard light. And again, you'll notice that over here, I have this sort of soft fall off. try to get some of these areas where some of that light from the right side would be hitting the sides of these trees. Occasionally I hit 1 through 10 or 1 through 0 to change my opacity. Change the color. that cloud one that I made really has an appealing um, just attention to detail like it just has a lot so I tend to use that one a lot
By the way, I haven't saved this whole time. So going back to this one, I'm going to try and find one of the more higher resolution photos that I got. Yeah, that one looks good. So what I'm looking for right now is something that's just something that I can use for abstract thought. So I'm going to double click this one. Again, I need a certain size image, image size. So I'm going to change this to be 4,000 pixels because I want that same effect that I was getting with the clouds where when I pull that um, thing out, it gives me a pretty aggressive detail size. So let's duplicate this. Let's it. Nah. So it starts being like kind of abstract. Like how do you just find patterns that you sort of kind of like? totally just even make these by brushing your own in. Yeah, that would be good. Control L for levels. That looks like something that'll make some beautiful trees. I'll select it. And then I hit Shift F4 to run my action. All this details. And hopefully that gives me enough resolution to work with. So I'll use the shape tool. Find that. Oh yeah, that feels good. Again, this is all on this layer. There's like the light layer versus the texture layer. Maybe I want something where I think about the local color more. So maybe I go in here and on this area, maybe I want to start thinking about you know, foreground rock colors and whatnot. Maybe down here where it's flatter and going out. I just set my layer mode to screen and at 10% opacity I can sort of drag this out to like 
slowly lighten it. Set it back to normal. And 100% opacity. Maybe add some rocks out of here. Uh, different opacity. Cool. So now I got this foreground one. Oh, by the way, this should probably all be reflected once more. So I'll select those layers, duplicate them, merge them, and I started thinking about how I might mirror them in the water. Are you not? Oops. I did one too many layers here. I just want these trees, not that foreground. Flip cores. Uh, flip vertical. Maybe just the race here, a little bit. Actually, here, let's apply it as a mask. Exposure on it a little bit. I'm going to move this layer below that one. Then we're kind of down to this, just the foreground one. So maybe on this one, you start doing these like Bob Ross individual trees. But you can start using kind of the same process. I want to move all these into one giant folder called Midground Trees. Group called Midground. And on this last one, I can start by getting some of those same ideas in. So maybe I start with something that's called like the local color, where I differentiate between, you know, Stones that are a little lighter, 
stones that are a little yellower. Stones that are darker. And then do this one on hard light and start bringing in at a very low opacity, like 10%, some of those transitions. So that's basically shape painting in a nutshell. I think the only other thing that you might want to consider doing is click on this and you've made all these wonderful shapes. So maybe you want to do something with them. You can click on one and shift click to another one to select a total of all of them. And then click on the gear icon in the shape dialog and export your shapes. Something like Oscar. And that's a file that you can then distribute on the internet. You can even sell it on Gumroad. Uh, people are out there making like whole shape libraries. And uh, I don't know, it makes very quick paintings. And because you're averaging it out over a long period of time, it ends up giving you the ability to sort of build up texture that has the same effect as a soft brush. So I hope this was enjoyable. And if you have any questions about shape painting, let me know. Thanks.